and yeah, I got introduced and got initiated. So yeah. I went to a meeting or two, and they were going to have a. Uh, they had the old electric circus in the east in the uh, West Village in New York. They were electric circus in the West Village, Lower Manhattan. So they were. They had that place rented, and we went there and we got initiated. I think we were, it was there. And they taught you Kriyas, whatever, four techniques of meditation called the light, the, the sound, the nectar, and the word. Uh, and you could do these little manipulations, and you could, like, light, you could see light inside, and then you could hear sound. And then there was the nectar was doing a thing with your tongue, and then the word was the breath, you know, or the I am existing. So you'd sit, and it was pretty cool. So I got introduced into that, and there I started to speak after a while. You know? No, I was clean. And uh, I had an easy grasp of that kind of stuff. It just came natural. So they, I had, they had me talking at times. And then, uh, yeah, so it started there. And then when I got sober... Somebody at the three-year mark, he was running these. There was a place, you know, like, we can talk like this for a little while before. Did you always have that record? By the no, way? record this okay, one. Yeah, we can, chop, we it can yeah. chop it off. Cool. Uh, there was a place called the Dry Dock, which was a 24-7 meeting place. It wasn't, it was owned by private people, but they were in recovery. And it was right near Lombard Street in San Francisco, Greenwich and Lombard. And a lot of people would go there for meetings, you know. There was meetings all day and stuff like that. So this guy had a meeting called the Fourth Step yeah, Workshop. Right. And he wanted me to take over. And what basically you did, the way he was doing it, he was just had people with pen and paper and he'd walk around like, you know, study class. You know, like, oh, are you doing okay? <laughs> you know, like this. So and no one really wanted to do it. So I said, sure, I'll do it. But things were cooking in me from, you know, because it says this power is going to constantly reveal shit. And so it was. I was I getting cooked every day. So I started with that and I moved past that fast. And I started speaking about self, you know, because that had hit me, the idea of self as something other than us, you know, like a common movement that took over a large assortment of characters, let's say. So the writing, you know, people would come in with the writing. After a while, there was no writing. There was just talking about that. And so I do do a four-week course, yeah? And so that was had lots of people. And so we started, that's where the CDs started to happen. So we started right, doing the CDs and putting them out. And then people would come very angry at me and, and they'd walk by my desk. I got 25 years. It's like weird threats and shit. Then people wanted to beat, punch me outside. I had, it was some cultish groups called the Pod People in San Francisco. They wanted to sort of jump me almost. It was, people were getting quite irritated in some respects. But there was a lot of demonstration. I saw heads come out of people's heads. Black. I saw people's faces go through like centuries like in about a 30 second period you could see the par you know the beast within coming out it was wild some old lady would just flip out you could see a, black, a big head a dark thing above her it was wild right. wild fuck. and it was like dharma battle really a lot of fucking resistance and energy and uh i came out of that because i did it for a long time I came out of that. Well, first of all, luckily, whenever that stuff launched, I had a, a grasp, a real intimate grasp on something was doing for me what I couldn't do for myself and something was doing for others what I couldn't do for myself. But on the intimate level, I could see something was using me to talk through. Yeah. Yeah. It was just fucking obvious. There was no... Uh, and... I would go through tons of different conditions because I was there a lot of Monday nights over the years. That's the Monday you talked about. I talked to a Monday night at the dry dock at 8 o'clock. 
And then uh, I would be broke. I was waiting to hear if I had AIDS, which took three weeks. I was tons of sinus infections. My love of my early life had left. It didn't matter. I saw that no, all I had to do was sit and something came through. And it became obvious that its condition saw our, my conditions as irrelevant to the purpose. Yeah. In other words, I didn't have to get aligned with that power. I didn't have to get better. I didn't have to be healthy, really. All I had to do was be there. That was my only job was to show up, sit down, and something would come happen. And I saw it. And it was amazing over and over and over and over again. It just really convinced me of a lot of things. So that's where we started doing it. So that was 32 years ago. And then uh, it just developed because I was I was I was at a cafe after one of those talks because we used to go out and this is why we do it our group we have fellowship because it comes from AA you know? so we'd go out and we were the I was pontificating at some place and these people came up after they were high hearing from a, another place and they go are you do you know the Course in Miracles? I said, no, I never fucking heard about it. They said, well, you're talking exactly like the Course in Miracles. I said, all right. So then I got in touch with that. And then something happened. And then finally, in 97, I think, I heard uh, non-duality, the idea of non-duality, 97, I think, 98. And then uh, that seemed to just... Uh, Just uh, explained everything, really, the non duality. Yeah, he explained everything. And, uh, you know, no matter, you know, I got into a lot of other stuff, Buddhism and shit, and meditating on retreats in Asia and Thailand, and, uh, you know, losing like a pound a day because you don't eat. It's just a bad soup in the morning. No one knew English, it was just there going, having hallucinatory experiences, calling them spiritual experiences. It was all coming from sitting for 13 hours and not eating. And then uh, 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 that strong suspicion was there that something going on that I'm not uh, picking up. Yeah, and There's an underlying situation that I'm not noticing. Thank you. And then uh, and it would be funny, you would leave a retreat in America and they would tell you, don't drive on the freeway, don't put any loud music on. I said, man, this is fucking pretty fragile. You know, and they had, in a controlled environment, they had produced an effect. But they were like, don't, don't, no heavy metal, don't go on a freeway. <laughs> what the fuck? You know what I mean? Jesus Christ. I got like, you know, fucking. Victorian glass is going to break at any second. I just, it was getting me very suspicious. It really was. Because how could this be the original condition that has to be held with such fragility and to, 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 to take care of it? It should be all, an all-wheel drive condition, I would feel. I mean, seriously. you know. And some of the old teachers from the guru would say, hey, listen, if you can't be in a meditative state on, in a you know, Fifth Avenue in New York, uh, then fuck it, forget about it. This isn't about, you know, having pristine conditions because it should be much more uh, dog shit, much more tactile, much more available. And that suspicion was there. And then non-duality explained it to me. Yeah, And, yeah, we can record this now. Yeah. The explanation was uh, there was a huge role going on, this idea of a long-lasting independent separate entity, yeah, that is so sure of its unsure conditions and shit like that, was basically the equation why the mathematics wasn't working. Because the mathematics, I feel, the primary number is zero, not one. And basically all of my equations had one included in it, me, yeah. And finally, instead of getting better, a better me, or using me to get to a larger me, I just lost and started losing interest in me because I 
had recognized it as foreign in recovery. And then I, non-duality brought it to the point of non-existence, not even that it's foreign, that it doesn't actually exist. Yeah? It never did, it never will. We're just living as if it already has and it's going to. Yeah? And there's a huge magic trick, I feel, in this place, because in dreaming, there's like two fundamental aspects. There's time and space. Yeah? So there's, because things are going to appear and they need space to do that. And it's going to take time to see it. Yeah. Yeah. So you see something 800 feet away and it moves closer. So time and space, time and space. And the way I never really questioned it, I was pointed at through time and space was time was linear. Yeah. And there was a past. And there was a large patch of that past. I don't remember. I had to rely on my parents to tell me how I was when I was a kid because I didn't seem to be there. But there's a past, and it's the int. It's just moving, really, in it in a, in a, in a, could be an unimportant way through the present to get to the future. And basically, on the mental scale, the past and the future is much important, more important than what it's what the. There's that little passage through the present, which is the only place you can be, the only time you can be. It didn't seem to be getting emphasized at all. The emphasis was on past and future. And let's just use the present to get to a better future or get away from a bad past. So the, pa the presence wasn't like a state. It was supposed to like a useful moment to deal with the past and future. That's insane. It's fucking totally insane. So, so, so when I started to hear descriptions about the mental landscape, it sounded like the mental landscape I had been transversing for many years. Yeah. And the beautiful of the, the sense of uniqueness started to drop almost as if the ice on the top of the mountain or the snow melted and just ran down. Yes. Sort of like that. It was not much effort. It was just observation, just observed. I observed the knots that they were explaining in non-duality, and I observed my role in the knots, so to speak. And then I observed the absence of my role as the space for all the knots to get unknotted and re-knotted, yes? And the space ain't getting knotted, and the space isn't getting unknotted. Yeah. Yeah, so I started just noticing shit. Uh, Which is the revelatory system, you know, something downloads and then you notice something and it usually changes the emphasis. So just like in England, they say alum, aluminum and then we say aluminum. Yeah. They, the emphasis changes the word in a sense. Yeah. And we're have we have a pre, uh, programmed emphasis called self-centeredness. So we're looking through. He has like part of a, you know, a space suit and, you know, this area with the little, you know, you know, computer downloads telling us the atmosphere and where, how hot it is. Yeah. There's, we're seeing through a very small lens and self-centeredness sees everything as, as how it pertains to self. So it's an interpretation, literally. Yeah. So I started to have a very strong sense the difference between seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, and the interpretation of seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, and having the novel of the seer, the hearer, the feeler, the taste of the touching. And it seemed like whatever was directing me was leaning quite heavy into the see or hear or feel or taste or touch or at the expense of the feeling or the sense of seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. It just seemed like it was way, the scale was way off, yeah? And so uh, these things were just hit. And some of those things brought me to a finality. You know, I was convinced. I'm not talking about this, but some unsuspected whatever was convinced that it wasn't this, actually. But that wasn't the first convincing. So the, the convincing that I had arrived at in AA on a sudden way by getting struck sober yeah, something life intervened and whacked me. I wasn't thinking about anything other than how can I get high and, you know, where am I going to stay that night? 
but something intervened and dropped the bomb on me, and I got to an I was convinced of something, yeah, which I didn't know I was capable of, but I have that capability, which is great. And that's what I tell young people in recovery. Pray for the ability to be convinced and get be done with a lot of shit because what I was in defiance of was facts of this life. They're not facts because this is to me an, an appearance or a dreaming. But in the dreaming, they were facts. And that was, I have a tendency, I have no control over usage of alcohol or drugs. And I'm not managerial quality. And my managing is always going to lead me to having to be managed by others. Just these are facts in my life. I was against those facts and I was losing yeah, constantly. And so that was cleared up in a second, really. Something just downloaded, you're fucked. And I got that. And then I'm not managerial quality. I got that. And then that's that incredible event brought about a solution in this dreaming, which was a way of life. And I believe that miracle would have died on the vine if I didn't get introduced to recovery. I would do. I would have believed it would have been just another passing activity that would have been swallowed up in the bottom of my incomprehensible, demoralized, pitiful state. Yeah, But it triggered something, and then there was action in this action world. And I ended up at a recovery meeting that night. And... The next morning, it triggered me to call up AA to find out if there was an earlier meeting because I had wisdom that I wasn't going to make it till 8 o'clock the next day. And there was a new meeting, and that was how it started. It just went off. And then the attitude of AA, which suits, I feel, us, is to you're going to be put to maximum use. It's not like you're going to get a house in Malibu or fucking like that. It has a different vision of us and our purpose and it's not a singular little agenda so to speak it's like how can i be of use to others yeah so this is one of the ways i was talking to people in aa and i saw i could understand shit they were having trouble understanding yeah just like i you know i can't understand my truck but a mechanic can so i go to him yeah to to when I need to get, know about my truck, I don't rely on me. I go to the mechanic and he tells me, how's it going? And I have faith in that good character. Yeah. So here I notice people's reactions to when I spoke. So what the fuck? Speak away. Yeah. Wasn't doing anything else. It's too great. So it could be used. And I truly had come to a conclusion that had like coded this whole action figure that it's best for this action figure to be used. Yeah, because I was busy using a lot of shit, drugs and people and everything like that. It's best to enter another phase to be used. Yeah. And and of course in recovery we find that you have it by giving it away. And I'm a true believer in that. Yes. And also in the Course in Miracles, the best way to uh learn is to teach. So I put myself in a position I got used. And it led to this situation right now, basically, because I just, uh, I gave up the idea of being the director and I, I can sense when I'm directed and I can also get a sense of what, not who, but what's directing me. And I've come to a, a familiarity with being directed by this power, whatever that is. Yeah. And so here I am in fucking Skillman. <laughs> and basically, the people who are at the people who are at the meeting, I had drove to the meeting with. So we already, yeah, sort of like we're driving to go to a meeting where I see the same people. <laughs> but it doesn't matter; it's just the way it goes. Yeah? And you know, because the funny thing is, the head. This is. You know, there's a lot of feel. I can share a lot of things that I've seen over the years. Yeah. And one of the basic big things was, well, I'll start with how it fell. So there I was in recovery, getting a sense that something that had defeated me was foreign to me. So I had to speak at a new meeting in a place called Petaluma. 
And I was trying to get across, as we always do through communication, something to the people you're communicating with. And that's the first meeting I came, the word parasite came in. And I figured it, man, what an incredible word, because it sort of felt like I was taken over by a parasite, alcoholism and addiction. Yeah. And uh, so, and I found imagery, obviously, is a better form of communication than words. And I hope imagery matched with a certainty or a sense, let's say, is really the great communicating. Yeah. So the imagery of something foreign to you, because that's how it worked with me. When I saw self as foreign to me, a possibility appeared that was just waiting for that moment for me to see self as foreign to me, and it was, I can be free from it. And then I had the head, whatever comes through the head, gave me a scan of my life since I was young till the point I was at right then and there. And it was basically, no matter how, it could have, it was compressed in just a one statement self trying to get out of self. So this mistaken idea trying to get out of all these things is things it's in. Yeah. And I saw that as the fundamental dilemma, the act of being identified, but things got grew. Yeah. And that one of the things that grew is you are not in the act of being identified. You're not the cause of it. It's a mechanical action from a mental process yeah so this was important because when i would share about selfing people would say they got it and then they'd say i've been selfing all day or selfing is driving me crazy <laughs> so now the selfing was being used to reinforce the idea that there's a self and i said wait see so i started to see this stuff yeah yeah i started to see a lot and i realized the message isn't to you. It's not to you. You as an activity is the obstacle, truly. So it was very clear to me not to spend any more time trying to convince you that you're not something else because that you is the something else I'm trying to talk about. Yes? Mm -hmm. So and I ran into this in early times where I was speaking in L.A. and the guy was that who was at the door came after the meeting, my friend Kyle, and he said, you know, all these people have come up to me and says, a lot of what this guy says goes over my head. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, what about that? I said, well, that's where we're aiming. We're aiming <laughs> over their heads, yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't, it's, it's not about you understanding shit. It's about understanding you. Not you getting more understanding, but understanding you and the understanding of you as not what, as, as not what you are. Just simple. And basically, you're the obstacle to that communication. So, and then there's some incredible statements if you look through other things like Buddhism, an old Zen master, Hoang Po, would say something like this. Whatever can be perceived... Yeah. So you know what perceived as seeing or what a feeling tasting. You you know a contact, a conscious contact with something is sort of like perceiving. You know you perceive this, you heard that, this and that. Yeah. So whatever can be perceived, like right now, this isn't something to study. It's it's to observe. So whatever can be perceived cannot be perceived. Fucking incredible message. Yeah. You should probably just drop the mic if they had them back then and walk them off the stage. Yeah. Whatever can be perceived cannot be perceived. Okay, so you hear that. Then you go into the head, listen to it, and its whole theme is completely opposite. Its theme is what is what can be perceived is what's perceived. Mm -hmm. And you're not listening to Huang Po state, K, K Huang Po. You're not listening to his station, but you're listening to self station. It's the franchise of unclear channel instead of clear channel. It's very unclear. Yeah. And so it takes the perceived to be that which is perceiving. It's completely opposite to the situation at hand. Now, how is that Titanic going to unturn? 
I would just fucking jump off the Titanic. Stop trying to drive, drive it and direct it in a new way. You're going to lose. He, all those attempts is part of the fucking turn. So this is just jump off ship. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to understand. I actually, it's a better result if you seem super confused. And it's even better if you're really fucking pissed off and frustrated. Because now you're getting to the end of the influence of those apparatus that you rely on as you that are not you, like intelligence and shit like that. Yeah. So it's you not getting it is the getting of it. Yeah. Because the futility of trying to get what you already are is subdued in most cases. And it's, it's masked by a story. If you let, if you see its raw stretching, its raw grasping and recognizing, yeah, that it's like the hungry ghost in Tibetan Buddhism. It's got a very small mouth and a huge belly. It can't get it. Yeah. So that's the, that's the success of satsang is the futility of trying to find yourself. Yeah. With the yes. self. Yes. Yeah. So this futility is is the jumping off point. You get like it's I'm never going to get it, and if you're looking for it, that's a bummer. Yeah, if you're constantly looking for it and you run into I'm never going to get it, then the self just turns on you, and it's because you didn't stay in India, you didn't do this, you haven't done enough, back by on and, and on and on and on and on. It comes up with tons of whipping reasons why you're not getting it. Yes, but another way you hear the same thing. I'm never going to get it, and it's hallelujah because it's an end of a fucking dead tributary anyway. Yeah, it just dries up. I'm never going to get it. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm never going to experience it. People call me. I had a non-dual experience. Yeah, that's going to Seven Eleven. That's what a non-dual experience looks like. This is a non-dual experience, truly. It's seen through a dualistic lens. It's a non-dual experience. You're not having a non-dual experience. There's no, you can't experience nothing. It's impossible. But, you know, I, I want to have another non All right, hey, go to the second 7-Eleven. That's a non-dual experience. What? Oh, yeah, it's non-dual experience. It is. It's you. So this whole point was to, and then I saw, this was just, you know, just things, there's different flowers from the same stem, you know, and they're opening up at different times, but the same stem. And then I saw, you know, I'd be at a meeting and think, okay, everyone, let's take a minute. I, I would see that as a possibility for the head to regroup. So we just pile on. You know, if someone thinks they got something, we've gone to another point. We just pile on to the point where it gets overwhelmed. Yeah, you know, like putting... A, a ton in a half ton pickup. It just can't handle it. Yeah. Or, and, you know, throwing a fourth ball in the juggling of the three balls. Yeah. It's going to stop the procedure. And when it stops, something's there that continues, which is us. Yes. So you have these imageries that tr create a sense felt, let's say, education, which is better than I feel, a book education shit. It's a sense felt one. You have all the information. But now the emphasis of how it's looked at is different. Yeah? Like they say in the Course of Miracles, they have the idea of God, yes, and or the Christ, the mind of Christ. And then there's a middle, there's an intermediary called the Holy Spirit. Yeah? And the Holy Spirit is going to appear in us and it's going to take the same information that the brain is collating, but it's going to collate the same information but come up with a completely different view. Yeah? This is when you surrender the self-centeredness and get the eyes of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And now you're getting the Holy Spirit's take on what's going on, if you want to use those terms, instead of the self-centered take. Yeah. So you've, you've now opened up to another channel, and the interest and attention, maybe it starts small. Yeah. It's uh, how many people are listening in, but then it's going to gather force because it's true. Yeah. It works. And so... And of course, when you're hearing or ha are available to the Holy Spirit thing, it gives you a very good view of the self-centeredness, which you do not have in self-centeredness. 
Yeah, you cannot see the. It, you may see all these little appendages, shit, but you don't get to the meat. Yeah. So this is. You watch the selfing stop. Watch saw it stop. Doesn't stop and things. And after a while, a lot of insinuation, something wax. Yeah. There's going to be a point where all the interest and attention that has been on the, in the camping of the selfing is going to move, migrate. You're not, you know, you're not pushing the birds in the migration. The interest and attention is just going to leave the interest in self-centeredness and move. And now that same interest and attention that was being used to illuminate uh all the insane shit that comes out of what's not happening will now be enriching your day. Yes. And you'll know it because of its effects. Yeah. You'll probably lose interest in a lot of shit that you had interest in because that interest in wasn't coming from you. It was mentally directed. And now the mental isn't directing it anymore. So now your interest comes back and does goes other places. And a lot of it just stays an undirected interest and attention is presence. Yeah. And the presence is the I am without the title or the name Paul. Yeah. What's ve being used by the head to verify its existence is I am. Selfing does not have a light upon itself. It doesn't generate anything. Yeah. It gets the light from the I am. So I am that some sense of existence, and then Paul, and, and that's the interpretive realm. Yeah, But Paul's verification doesn't come from Paul. It comes from the I am. You feel like Paul all day. No, you don't. That, uh, that's a manufactured, directed take. You just, yeah, you sense the presence of existence. In other words, you're on, incessantly on, and it doesn't, you don't have a memory of a day when there was an off. Yeah, it's just odd. And then you're incessantly on. Yeah, it's incredible, really. And now that presence is where you abide. Presence is present, obviously. You know, people want to have a sense of presence. It usually is, is around present. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you don't have it in the past or future. And if there's enough interest and attention in the past and future, you're seemingly not present, and therefore there's not a sense of presence. Yes? Seeming. Seemingly. There is a complete sense of presence, but in, in the world of dreaming, seemingly is it appears to be true or false to you. Yeah? So to you, it may seem as if you're not here. It doesn't make you not here, but it can seem to. And this is sometimes why I get upset with the absolutists of certain messages, because they're not taking this shit into consideration. And we're in Rome, and sometimes, or, you know, you got to render unto Caesar's what Caesar's. So if you think just because you're not a person, uh, you don't have alcoholism, you're probably going to be a drunk non-dualist. Yes. Yes. So there's certain things that need to be dealt with. Yeah, they're not infinite. They're finite. But if they aren't dealt with, the finite will seem like it's infinite. And the infinite won't be noticed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So these things I just learned. And I learn a lot from the sharings because uh, I don't know. I just do. You know, just another, the same stem, but another, oh, another bloom appears. And it's pretty cool. And it's, it seems to have a large space to bloom, but this, the stem comes from one source, yeah, strong, yeah, yeah. And then it's, the ideas come in and, uh, yeah, so this whole idea of negation, which I first heard from a guy named Wu Wei Wu, yeah, he had a book out, a uh, very heavy slog, he's quite intelligent, could be rough to go through, I wouldn't recommend it really. We've sort of abbreviated like a drug addict would. Yes, yes, yes. But the point is, it's basically, it's in the seeing of what you're not is is what you actually are. So it's a it's a negation of what we have taken to be so, so that what's truly so gets obvious. Yeah. 
and I, I'm a true believer with that direction. I'm not a believer in trying to describe the indescribable or, or you know, everything is consciousness. I don't think people get any of that shit, you know? It just doesn't work. But in the recognition of what you're not, it's obviously readily available. You can take one second and see what's going on in your head and there, and uh, all the bouts, and it becomes clear. And we, it's a weird, it's almost like a bounce back reflection. Because just like if you were always in the water, you wouldn't know anything about water. Yes? It, couldn't, it wouldn't be a topic to you or nothing. If you're in something all the time and there's no out of it, you don't know. You're in it. And this is the idea. Just like if you are under the influence of gravity all day, which we are, but we are the ones bitching about that hill. But it ain't the hill. It's gravity. yeah, Or it's the stair. It's not the staircase that gets us. It's the gravity. yeah. And so everyone wants to study gravity and you know, write books on gravity, but the best, I believe, would be go into an anti-gravity chamber, feel the absence of gravity, and now you'll know gravity. And this is why I believe in negation. So when you negate that which is taken to be so, you will see it as unso quite well, because you'll see it from what's so, without any adornment or, or, or mix or or, oh, let's merge it. Let's integrate you know, none of this shit. You just will see it. Yeah, you'll see it. And that's it. That's better than 80 books or whatever. You see it. And it's not you. There's a seeing of it. And that thing can trigger a lot of convincing. Yeah? And then you get to a point where all those fucking mental telescope goals of I'm going to transcend to the 11th dimension. You just get brought back to a dog shit awareness and you're just on all the time and no parades are going to be thrown for you. You may not even have a loving gaze. Yeah? <laughs> you may not look like you're calm. You may not dress like you should. Yeah, But there'll be a loss of interest in so much stuff and there'll be an, a richness in just now. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can just go in a trance and laying down because you're not anywhere far away from what, what you are. You never are. In other words, I don't have to travel to arrive back to where I already am. So, so, so in my view of recovery, we have the idea of the higher power. And when you first come in in AA to make it easier with all your beliefs and, and ideas about God to get through the door, you know, they said, listen, you can have a God of your own understanding. Just get the fuck in the program, really. That's basically what they were doing because they had faith that if they would do what we do, they'd get what we get. Yeah, so leave your thing aside. So, all right, you come in and you have it. All right, I'm going to have a God of my own understanding. I'll get a parking lot space in front of the meeting, maybe get a date, you know, get a job. This is my God's working for me. Yeah, but very quickly you grow out of it because the AA delivers the goods, really. Recovery delivers tangible fucking effects. It's not so, oh, this is, you know, this is going to be a delay. No, you get things change. Yeah, and so my evolution about the higher power is very quick to, I have a higher power of its own understanding. I, no way do I want to have a higher power of my understanding. <laughs> It's going to be a very myopic view, and it's going to have to squeeze in to get where I am. But a higher power of its own understanding is revelatory. Yeah? So now you're open with the I don't know. You're open to really find out and have an intimacy with this concept that's just like, like a, you know, like a bit of, you know, a bit of saran wrap around an incredible present, you know. The present, you don't need to have a name of it. But there's an intimacy that you grow into because uh, it's just that. It's always available at all times, right where you are, with no requirement necessary. And most especially, it's not based on your condition. Its availability is not based on your condition. That's given way too much relevance to the head. For the head to, to have the relevance that it can block you off from the sunlight spirits, complete bullshit, really. Yeah, 
because you are there's nothing before us as what we are nothing if you've been taken anywhere this way and you've stopped there's probably nothing behind you yeah yeah everything else is before it so there's the behind the camera and then there's the before the camera we see a lot of what's before the camera that says it's behind the camera but it can never get behind the camera yeah this is what happens in science. They study everything, but they can't study the studying. Mm -hmm. Yes? They can't get behind that which is learning everything. Yes? Yeah? You just keep on going. It's always going to be, you're always going to be in front of the camera as this appearance. You're never going to be behind the camera. I don't care how clear you get. You'll probably be unclear about this point. You can be super clear. I've met a lot of super clear people, and they thought they were a super clear, clear person, <laughs> which made me lose interest in what they said immediately, <laughs> because I don't give a shit how super clear this gets. I don't. How long are you going to have that super clarity? Till 75? I've only got a few years to have be super clear. I'd much rather not be. Anything that can be an unbe. I'd rather just the is seems to be the, the reliable <laughs> non-state I'd like to skate with. Yes. <laughs> what's what's levitation gonna get me here? I can see you fine. I don't need to raise up from the chair for a second. <gasps> I went up a, an inch today. Why? Who cares? <laughs> Does that have any relevance in my getting back to Dover? No. Yeah. So, so this uh, I just have a very all those goal sh shots have been brought down, and basically I'm looking for a coffee or something. It's very, it's very un mundane and ordinary. My drives, and if you don't have a purpose, you make one up for the day, because the action figure probably does better with a purpose. It does, you know. It's not going to go into Sartre with a meaninglessness of everything. It doesn't do well with that shit, you know. You've got to just bypass that. And it needs a sense of belonging. And we have a sense of belonging, especially in recovery, you know. And all these things. And it produces a healthiness to it with this. Yeah. The mental state doesn't see this clearly. It doesn't. It sees it as a vehicle do it for its expression and shit. And it actually hates it, in the truth. When people say they hate themselves, that's not them. They do not hate themselves. There's no fucking way. And they are not their own worst enemy. Something is, and something hates you, for sure. But it's not you. This is the good news. Yeah? And I feel this good news is the starting point. It's not the ending point. You don't arrive there. You've never left this good news. You don't arrive at the good news. You've never left the good news. You may hear it in time, but when you hear it, it's going to tell you it's always been this way. Yeah, because it's always is this way. Yeah? And it puts all the, it gives them the opportunity for a lot of shit to stop and rest. And, yeah? And then uh, there are a lot of benefits, though. Easy access to peace of mind. Very easy. Yeah, you can enjoy peace of mind without having the right conditions. You don't have to have candles and quiet and shit like that. Basically, uh, the, the state of peace of mind doesn't have to have a lot of requirements. It's, it's a, there to enjoy, yes? And then you can, you're just on constantly. So you're on when you're awake, when you sleep, when you're thinking you're not on, you're always on. And when you're finally off, there won't be any there to, anyone there to recognize that. So, yeah. So the action figure is going to go out like a light, but it's not, the light's not going to go out. But the action figure is going to go out like a light, but the light's not going to go out. Yeah. That's how, you know. So now your, your attention is on the side of the light, not the bulb. Yeah, yeah. So when the bulb doesn't work, it doesn't that doesn't affect the light, does it? No, no. So here you go, and uh, 
because you're not doing anything, you can do anything, really. You don't really, you're not doing anything, really. You're not that keen on anything, so you can do anything. So, like, you know, Lud got in touch with me. I had strong suspicion not to come here because Lud once had a job at one of the talks to turn on the video camera. And he said, he said he was waiting for me to give the signal, which was me starting to speak. He didn't get that. And the camera never went on. So I was going, should I come down to Lud? Uh, I, said, I said, what the fuck? Let's go with it. Yeah, who cares? I was guilty about two years about that. I didn't want to talk to you. Who cares? I know. We're sitting there. What signal could it have been? Let's move it. It's usually, usually when you should turn on the video. He was still there behind the video the whole time, <laughs> waiting for the signal. I was like, These things just amaze me, but it happens a lot. It's like, wait a minute, how, how did I? How did I? How did that little bit of direction get so <laughs> misinterpreted? But that I, was the clearest video you ever. Had. That's right. This is the life of Zen Bishop. A lot of disorganization. So. So, uh, uh, yeah, so to me, this isn't, first of all, I do not think it's a good move to describe the indescribable. I don't, I do not, I do not believe it's a good move to try to understand the incomprehensible. I do not, I do not. When I hear someone speaking that way, I, I lose interest very quickly. I was on a lot of like public radios and like some of the topics are great. As soon as it's all about you, and you have two smiles. There's an upper smile. What the fuck? You know, just turn that thing off. Who care? I don't care how much we find out about this. I found out enough about this. I'm not it. But that's what I needed. That is the knowledge I needed here. And I found it out. I'm not this. That's all. All the other knowledge is too superfluous. Yeah. Some of it's good about the body condition and shit. But basically... The fundamental question has been answered. I'm not this. Yeah. Now it's not this trying to be not this. Yeah. I'm seeing it not from here. Yeah. And from where I'm seeing it, I'm not this. Yeah. And I'm not all. I wasn't this, and I will not be this in the future. Yeah. And it's a, it's not a debatable topic. It's that thing has already been shelved. And then you just go about your business. I think is a pretty big thing to clear up. I do. I really do. I feel like there's going to be a lot of journeys that are going to go nowhere based on it's you leaving. Yeah. I do. So this is a very saved me a lot of a lot of whatever. Yeah. So very clear what I'm not. I have no idea what I am, and I have no interest in having an idea of what I am. I don't. I understand from where I started that it's going to be a mystery. That's its nature. I have no fucking idea. And I've lost interest in having one. Yeah? And I've lost interest in the need to be liberated because I've been liberated from the need to be liberated. Completely liberated from it. I'm not trying... I'm here just to be here. I don't see this as going anywhere. I don't see this as one step in the millions of steps to arrive somewhere. I don't. I do not. I think this is a moment encased in itself that will disappear and not go anywhere. Yeah. And hopefully you'll get nothing. And every time you go to Z Z YouTube and Zoom and send bitch slap, you'll get nothing. And then there will be a moment, there will, that there'll be a recognition because the emphasis that's on something will go to nothing. And then you'll see it's everything. You really will. I do. I have faith in it. I have complete faith in it. And I believe satsang is one of the vehicles that can be used. Yeah. You know, peak, exp you know, like getting whacked, having a terrible bottom, but you don't want to have to manufacture that. This is the easiest, softer way. You've got all the information. Hear about how to collate it in a little different manner. Let something collate it differently than what you've been fed all these time and see what what kind of equation comes up. And maybe it'll bring a, about an ease and comfort or a traveling lighter. And if it does and it keeps to, keeps seemingly reinforcing itself, you're on to something. You've, and to me, in time, I have seen it. When I was first hearing it, 
you know, there was the moment it was like an unspoken yes. I could feel it, feel it in my gut. And, I, and then there was another moment I just realized this is a knowing before all knowledge and all this stuff. And then there was a moment I was, I'm never going to ask you another fucking question because I saw the futility of the answer, asking a question to get an answer. Just made no fucking sense to me anymore. And really, the futility of all the searching was profound, profoundly, a profound diagram. It really put an end to things. Yeah. It wasn't because I didn't do enough or I wasn't worthy. It's just I cannot get what I already am. I don't care what intermediary I would send. I can't get it. That's why saviors fail us, because we don't need to be saved. That's why teachers disappoint us when we make the message the messenger, because it wouldn't serve you to, have, to believe they have something, because then there's a belief that you don't. Mm -hmm. And the duality will spring out, and then you'll put too much emph emphasis on that, and they have to fail you. They have to fucking have sex and steal money to disappoint you with the hopes that you will give up that idea and fall into the, the, the answer that's always been present. Yes? So saviors fail, teachers fail, but that's their success. That's the real value is when you're left with your own devices, you will see they're not your devices. Yeah? And when all your attempts to arrive at where you already are fail, it may dawn on you that you're already there. And I have seen, truly, the dynamics of this place is basically you're trying to get into what you're not out of, and you're trying to get out of what you're not in. It's that fucking simple. It's that extreme. It has millions of like degrees and permutations, but basically most of us are trying to get out of something that we're actually not in, and we're trying to get into something that we can never be out of. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Nothing. Just let the pants fall and stand there naked for a second. Yeah? The idea of seeing the emperor with no clothes for many people is a peak experience. With this message, is you'll see the emperor with no clothes, but you will also see the emperor has no clothes while you see it wearing clothes. That's the clarity of the message. You're not going to have a peak experience where you see all the shit unadorned and you recognize it. And then a couple seconds later, it's been claimed and you're, you, there's a loss of it. This is you recognize no matter how much it's wearing, no matter how it looks, the emperor has no clothes. That becomes a fundamental condition. Yeah. So it's like the... Uh, in a sense, it's against that Who song. You know, we won't get fooled again. The old employers, the new employer, same as the old employer. Exactly. You're going to recognize because, all right, I'll give you the mechanics that I sense in the mental activity. The mental activity's movement is to claim. Yeah? So the mental activity is brought into contact by us. So we're the conscious contact event. We are. We're the conscious contact and what we run into, the mental state notices, and the notice it, and it, it arises in time, yeah, and it claims what the seeing of something, yeah, and it take and it translates the seeing of something as the seer of something. So the verbing of the conscious contact in this event with the five gates of senses, yeah, seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. Six gate, this the noticing of thoughts and shit and other ideas. Yeah. That conscious contact, that's basically like the, the trigger. That's what triggers everything. Yes. The mental state arises a, a little bit after that conscious contact. Conscious contact is really the border between no time and time. Yes. Yeah. And then in time, the mental state arises and it's, it's, trait or characteristic is it claims whatever it gets introduced to. So, all right, and seeing, I'm the seer. Yeah, it takes seeing to be evidence there's a seer. Yeah, and it's it has a problem, but it, go, it overrides it very well. The seeing was before the seer. 
So there was seeing before a seer. Yeah? But there's no seer unless there's seeing. That's a difficult one to get over, but it does gets over it very well because it in time the seeing comes first and that which comes after, but what comes after is presupposed to be before. Yeah? So now the seeing triggers that there is a seer, but not only that, a historical seer. So when you do something, you feel like you've done tons of shit. Yes. Yeah. So all the time that all the doing has been encompassed in, you feel that. Every time the claiming of a doing, it triggers a, a historical sense of the doer. This is the bondage of self on, on just fucking mechanical level. Yeah. So that which comes after this idea of you and what are you but the doer? If you weren't the doer of your life, whose life would it be anyway? Yeah. So the whole story of you is on this foundation that's manufactured by the claiming of actually the act of being alive, so to speak. Yeah. And is used to convince and be the evidence of our existence. But really what Paul is, is I was Paul. I will be Paul. Therefore, I am Paul. Yeah. Yeah. And that, therefore, I am Paul gets run with the sense of existence, I am. But that I am now is used to say Paul. Yes. So this happens really fast. So the head claims it, right? Produces a sense of being the doer after the doing. And that sense of being the doer gets presupposed before all the doing. Then on. Yeah. So life is used to support the story or the interpretation of life, the mental and of course, it's got to suck up a lot of interest and attention to keep reinforcing this because it's not true. Yeah. So something to appear to be so that isn't so has to be reinforced constantly. And what better way to reinforce that every time anything happens, it immediately triggers that it's you. Yeah. So the living of life is, re is being used to reinforce the one who's living the life. And the one who's living the life is an interpretation. It's a story. A story. Yeah? And it's not like a story. The story is you're the one who has all the stories. Yeah? Yeah. So in, in Ramana, I read another thing. I'm trying to go over what happened when I was out there. I got introduced to Ramana Hashi, and I read collective talks, which were uh, transcriptions of live talks from 1935 to 39 or something. And then I got little, I went to where he lived and they had little booklets of him from a lot of people that had listened to him that wrote about his teachings. And they were quite, they were a teaching, yeah? And there was, and a lot of things were constantly said in different ways and they were usually emphasized as the problem, the greatest mystery. So, yeah, this is important to read. And he, they would say it indifferently. And the one I got stuck on was, he's presenting this, that there's a presupposing, a pre, meaning, you see? So there's an assuming, and that assumption is presupposed, a pre-assumed. That's a trick in time. Yeah? That which comes after is after in time. But in this case, it, it says it's before in time. And because we're like conditioned cows... Yeah, we just keep going to the trough. Yeah. Yeah. So here, he would say there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing. What are they presupposing about the non-existent thing? That is an existing thing. So the presupposing of the non-existent thing to be an existing thing, like in other words, self-existing, not an appearance in existence, but that which is actually existing. Yeah. So the presupposing of the non-existent thing to be an existent thing and then wanting to get salvation for the existent thing. And they says, this is the dilemma. And then what happens? This is what the, the effect it produces. If this is the case, and he was basically saying this is the case, your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing being an existent thing. How can they destroy it? Yes? I mean, the exist, yeah. So the non-existent thing is a body, and it obviously it's being generated or animated by some power, yes? That is not of its own. 
So if you've ever known someone and then saw them dead, there's sometimes you get a hint that that wasn't the person that you were loving. It's just an inert fucking non-existent thing, a body. Yeah. So this presupposing is that the non-existent thing was Uncle Fred. And you knew Uncle Fred as the non-existent thing. Then you see the you see the non-existent thing. It's dead. You get a hit. Hey, that wasn't Uncle Fred. And then if you have an interest in curiosity, you go, why did I see Uncle Fred as the body? I must be seeing Paul as a body. Yes, so I'm projecting what I think is true here to everything else. And I just saw a big interruption of that by a dead body that I used to call Uncle Fred. And it was obviously Uncle Fred wasn't in the neighborhood anymore, <laughs> even though the body was there. What? Whack. Yeah, early Zen this side. So, all right. So the presupposing thing, yeah, your spiritual practices themselves, if this is going on unbeknownst to you, are actually reinforcing that. They're not going to destroy it. Ah, this is the perfect unveiling of the futility of seeking in a way. Because we're seeking as a non-existent thing under the assumption that we're existing in and of ourselves. So when even when people talk about consciousness, I'm conscious, what is that picture of I am a body? Yeah? I'm seeing. What's pictured when you say I'm seeing? You as a body. So this is the constant giving the meaning of being an existing thing to a non-existing thing. Constantly. And if that's the case, which he says it probably is, your practices to do this or that are actually being used to reinforce that identification. They're not going to free you from it. Now, when I read that, it hit me. Yes. Right in the balls. I wasn't protecting anything. My spiritual identity, it just whacked me like a kick in the balls. Wow. Stunned me. And the house of cards collapsed. Yeah. You'll see them again as a house, but you'll know something about them. They're not. They're not a house. They're a house of cards. Yeah. You start seeing the cards, not the structure of the house. Yeah. So very beautiful, but it's very profound because it capt I feel, think, captures everything perfectly. Yeah. There's a mix-up with the non-existent thing with existence. And instead of seeing existences first, that maybe the non-existent thing is an appearance in existence, we think the non-existent appearance is what's existing. Yeah, a fundamental sort of mistake, but it keeps repeating itself over and over again. It's repetition, and then everything that it may do or not do from there is used to reinforce that idea. And he's saying, how can that reinforcing of it is destroy it. It's a, what you think you're putting it to a purpose, it already has a purpose. The mental state, the sense of you and I rises very fast, maybe less than a half a second. Yeah. So when there's an action and then there's a feeling that it's you did it. Yeah. Very fast. I And this is humbly my feeling. I do not believe you could do a process that can get before that process. So let's say you're going on a retreat and you read about being a, a you read about meditation. So your head gets as the head has also heard you reading about retreat, and now when you get to the the place, it would have a some of them have a you know a fall like this. They're beautiful, and you'll be go, you'll be putting your ass on this meditation seat. Your head already has you as a meditator. It already being claimed it. Yeah, and so now what you're doing to try to get out of something is being used by the head to reinforce that something. Ah, pretty quick. So I do not believe there's a process in time that can beat the brain's process of you, the manufacturing of you. Maybe there may be someday, but I don't think so. And the funny thing is, whatever is the prior process, this process is going to influence the processes that come after and will not necessarily be influenced by the processes that come after. So what establishes itself first is going to affect what comes after, and it's going to use what comes after now to reestablish its firstness. Yes? Beautiful if you see it. Very beautiful. I'm saying there's something in place 
it's the beginning of time for us, but it's not timelessness. It's of time. But the manufacturing of you is basically the beginning of what we call our time. Yeah? Right. And then that process cannot, I do humbly do not believe you can find a process here that's going to beat that process. Yeah? There's not going to be a process that's going to tell you you're not that which is going to be re expressed to be you. I just don't see it. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. That process alone, whatever you do after it, is going to have be influenced by this. So this is going to infect whatever you do. So what you think is seems like a very good idea, it could be, but if this thing gets the chance to claim it, it's going to infect it with something. Just like when people do all this, they're doing service constantly, they have 15 sponsees, but they think they're full of themselves because they think they're a great saint or a guru in AA. Yes, you see? So the same processes that would seem like only good results could come from there. They get fucking claimed, and there's other results that are produced, yeah, by the influence of the first process. And because there's, the process comes after, it cannot affect the, that which is before. That's why you're not going to meditate yourself out of the meditator. I tried. I went on two-week, three-week retreats where I was meditating 13 hours a day, seven hours sitting, six hours walking in different countries, Thailand, fucking other places, yeah? And not once, not once was the what was revealed through non-duality revealed. It just wasn't. And then the same thing, just like those people with the, don't listen to heavy metal, you'd get into the tuk-tuk and go back to, let's say, Chiang Mai, and as you were driving to the city, the things was getting all reformed. <laughs> the, the process of the non-existent thing was giving it the meaning. So fast. So fast. I do not believe you're going to change its conditions by changing these conditions. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to do, it's going to do it in heaven or hell. It's going to claim it. Yeah. So just get to know that it's mechanical. It's not you doing it. Yeah. And then if it's not you doing it, you'll be more apt to see it clearly. Because if it, you, there's a feeling it's you doing it, you may not want to know you're doing it because it looks pretty fucking crazy and shitty. Yeah. So the way to do a fearless inventory is not to do one on you, but to do one on self because self's not you. Then you can do a fearless inventory. You cannot do a fearless inventory on you. It won't. There's too many blind sides. It has a much more overriding program, which is its own survival. Self. So yeah. self is not going to do a thorough or fearless inventory. It's just fucking not. It doesn't because it's, it's just not going to do it. That's its programming. It can act, oh, yes, let me go over. It's not. But a fearless thorough info inventory cannot happen if you see it's not you. <laughs> yeah? So if you see the non-existent thing being presented as an existent thing from existence, you will see through it. I hope with the right understanding of non-duality and repetition through satsang. That's my humble feeling. Yeah. It doesn't matter quickly or slowly because there's no time. If you arrive at it tomorrow, it says you never left. And if you arrive at it right now, you've never left. So the never left erases all the longing or the, I missed it. It says time has nothing. Look it. And then we'll go to the share. Right? Take you go to sleep today, you dream of a like one sip of a Slurpee, yeah, five seconds, that's the all that you remember. The next night you dream of a 300-year epic, and you go through eight incarnations. Of course, you're always, you're not like a cobbler or a shit picker up, but you're a princess or something, a crusader or something. It's always like a superhero movie. So here you are, right? It's three hundred year epic. How long does it take up to wake? How long does it take to wake up from both of those dreams, like that? Yeah. So at the waking up, the time doesn't matter. You can have a three hundred epic. It's just as small and big as a five second. Yeah, because in the awakeness from the dream, there's no time. Time only has the relevance in the dream. When you seem to wake up from in the morning, it has no relevance. And its reality, no matter how real it seemed, will not seem, be seen as a reality when you wake up. Like that tiger that was scaring you, 
you're not going to probably be scared the rest of the day after you wake up. Because you will, you will know that it's a dream type. Yeah? The problem with this, the awake dream, we don't have a morning. We have a morning to the, with, to the night dream, but we don't have a morning for the awake dream. So the awake dream just goes on and on. And it has encompassed the night dream. As if it's, it's the, it's the reality and this was the dream. This is the awake dreaming, as Ramana said. This is the awake dream. Yeah. We don't have a built in morning like we do at night. Yeah. Most of us wake up and then that which was taken to be so real is, is seen as not real. We don't have it. We have to trigger it another way, so to speak. Yeah. I feel if there's any way, there's no way, obviously, but satsang, I feel is a vehicle. And it's the one I fell into because I haven't done anything other than go to satsang in like 20 something years or more, whatever. I haven't. I go to share and shit, but I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Usually. And I only, it's been tested here. That's why I share it. I'm, what I, what I say, I'm not saying my conceptual idea of the left side of the star of Orion. I'm saying I've seen this is what's I've noticed seeing. I went through this whole thing. Yeah, I'm going through whatever's happening. It's not I'm not coming out of some you know Urantia book or something. I'm coming out of being introduced to certain ideas, the awareness, having an emphasis change. Instead of focusing on something, it opened up, saw a whole lot more. This is how it happened and how it stabilized, and I truly believe. A satsang is a perfect place for the invitation because you're not doing anything and you're not asked to do anything. And I think some of, you know, I think the greatest, the greatest shit comes through osmosis. You know, we put some meaning in the seats and it's coming right up your ass. <laughs> you get it that way. And then shit's going to be revealed and you go like a dog like this. And after a while, you're going to see the logic of what we really are is like this to a dog. Yeah, oh, it's trying to understand, can't seem to understand. This is the beauty. This will try to understand, it can't understand it. Can't, cannot get it. You might as well get off that boat now. You are not getting it. You're not. That's the great news. You are not getting it. If your if your grasp is shaped as mud or as me or as David, that David is not going to be able to grasp. It's not. You might as well fucking give it up. Because it ain't. You might as well just masquerade. Go get robes. Fucking put a Shri in front of your name. Fucking, you know, get money for thinking that you have it. Really? Shri, Shri, change your name. You'll have people coming. You will. People fucking have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I mean, didn't you see that movie they had in uh, Netflix where the Indian guy who was a business person decides to grow his hair and he presents himself as guru and then it gets goes too far and he tries to tell them they won't let him. <laughs> oh no no I just work on Wall Street. No I mean he got captured by the role motherfucker. Yeah so I mean we're not the greatest eye of the service. We're not like oh I it's not, it's not no, no 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 so one thing here important the message is not the messenger. And if there's going to be any emphasis, I would put the emphasis on the message and not on the messenger. Yeah, because the messenger is going to change. It's going to have its foibles and shit like that. It's the message that's clear. It's the message that's reliable. It's the message that's the delivery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. All right. You want to share the Yeah, it was just, you know, there's a, we say it, there's, there's not an I doing it. Like there's a, the, this machinery, like the mental state, it, you know, there's a grasping of it. And I, I like when you talk about like the chum in the water, like it, it'll like throw stuff out there. Like you might say, you know, I'm disconnected or I'm not worthy or say in the yeah. case of addiction, it'll say, it'll use that I'm an addict to do it. Or if you're not an addict now, it'll use I was an addict. You know, it throws all this chum in the water, but it's like when you bite the hook, 
like there's like mm-hmm. almost identification, but it's a mechanical thing. You can see that also though. It's happening. Yeah. yeah. Whatever whatever you see, you're not of. Mm-hmm. So it tries to believe that you've triggered the first lock and you can see that, but then it usually wins out with the triggering of the second lock. Mm-hmm. You've you don't this is why I humbly feel when viewing what's going on, hold on to the idea that it, there's a mechanical claiming. Mm-hmm. What does it claim? It claims the seeing of things, mm-hmm. which is the seeing of things is triggered by awareness. So it's claiming to be the one who's aware. So when it becomes aware of something, it says it's the one that's aware of the something. It's whole, all of its interchangeable uh Pieces aren't brought into the light by it. It's awareness. Awareness is all there is, yeah? There's an, an oddness that sees. It's not choosing to see. It's its nature, yeah? It's not bias. It's not discriminating. It's just aware, yeah? The head arises and claims that, tries to put a flagpole in that non-locatable location and say it's me. That's now seeing all of these weird shit about me. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, it's, it, there's a call to arms. I've got to work on me. And, blah, 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 blah. and yes, on and on and on. And so most people, the thing that was a subjective event that now has become objectified with some knowledge, yeah? the same subjective event is happening concerning that objectification of self. Mm-hmm. There's now a subjectification of self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's self unbeknownst, then you get become aware of it. Ah, there it is. There's the thief. But what arises is the, the policeman aspect of it. Now the policeman is all right, you gotta fucking behave yourself, shit like that. And then, oh, and by the way, you gotta be perfect. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is time. Fuck all this shit. You gotta transcend, man. You let, uh, no, uh, then you start feeling all this fucking responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And usually you don't see f- this. You don't see this. So there it stops. So your, your lens has an ability to go panoramic, but it gets stopped by the mental. So mm-hmm. first, you don't know what the fuck's going on. Like you're on a consequential level, active addiction. You're just getting whacked and fucking like that. And yeah. You have no clue what's happening. But you do have a whole story. They're fucking with me. Whatever. But you don't. True. And then something how, let's say you get physically sober, the lens opens and you start seeing stuff that you weren't seeing. You were looking from stuff. Now you start seeing it. Wow. All right. And then maybe they give it a name, self, let's say. Okay. All right. So here's the awareness. Doesn't It doesn't stop at all. But in here it does seemingly. So you hit a wall, and then there's a new you there, another you. And this new you is looking at the old you. But it's, it's the same. It's of the same cloth. Yeah? It's just now the new subjective self that's going to become, to look at the objective self to come become a better self or whatever. Yeah? That's the bondage of self. And so wherever you are, it's going to arise and claim like almost like a flagpole, that that's where it is, yeah? And that's where the realm of awareness is going to stop for you. Even though there's no stopping in it, the awareness is going to stop. The lens is going to stop, and get. And sometimes it gets frozen in that position. It's just like for most of us, we've been living in a frozen aperture called self-centeredness, yeah? Right. In self-centeredness, you can move it maybe one degree One degree, but there was no, it was defined myopically and it was a myopic vision. Yeah. It could dream of panoramic, but it could only dream of panoramic from a myopic frame, which is not panoramic. Yeah. And then things happen, hopefully, in your life and you get, you wake up. Yeah. You get the message, whatever. And there's a moving backward. So more awareness. So it's not like more seeing, but you see more. Yeah, this awareness sees more. So now that which you look, we're looking from, you start seeing as another manufacturer. Yeah, very good knowledge, but it will get claimed. 
And if you don't have this warning, the knowledge that you acquire about what has defeated you is going to be used to defeat you still. Yes? It's going to be self-knowledge, which is going to avail us nothing when knowledge of self is very valuable. And I'm giving you a humble piece of knowledge of self is that the claiming of whatever is going on is very fast and it's mechanical. There's no choice of volition and you are not before it. You are a product of it. Yeah. This idea of you. Yeah. And that idea of you is not going to get out of that idea of you. You are not in it. That's really the out. See? So I humbly believe you have to catch the thief and the policeman and see neither of them as you. Yeah. So you see, oh, man, it's pretty good. Now I know what's fucked me up and shit like that. But the same thing that allowed all that shit to happen is being the pontificating about why it shouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. When you see that second aspect, there's a freedom there because this is non-duality. So the selfing is up to, yeah? It's the objective idea of self and the subjectiveness of self, yeah? Once it is like an old claiming, the other one is a present moment claiming. The subjectiveness of self is a present moment claiming of the objectifiedness of self, really. So when you see both of them, I figure that usually has an impact that produces a traveling layer because... This is non-duality, not two. And there's two aspects of self in all of us. Yeah? So when I was young, I was listening to, like, the policeman. I didn't curse. I didn't talk at school, nothing. I was perfect as I could be. Yeah? Then I realized, second grade, I saw some kids walking down from the cafeteria as we were walking up, and all the attention would go to those kids that were loud and fucking up. So I, there was a decision, and I just started fucking up, and I got what they had wanted, you know? Yes? And then that got so bad, the thief, it led into addiction and shit like that. I got sober, and sobriety gave the opportunity for the policeman to show back up. So the first four or five years of AA, I was in, like, strict fucking surveillance from the head and then when i did something i had to do it perfectly and all this fucking shit came in and it was like a big fucking stick went up my ass yeah and then i realized why i got went to the thief was to get out of the policeman and here i am underneath the policeman and unfortunately i only could believe there was only two voices either i heard one or the other and then the non-duality showed me there's, there's a place of neutrality, which is where I think the program will place you. Is I was placed in a position of tr neutrality, seeing I'm not the policeman nor the thief. Yeah, yeah. I, you hear them. Yeah, I hear them. The thief is a lot more a deep echo from far away. It's, does The thief has been neutered quite a lot. It had its run. It's not. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not going to go to a club that's at 70 years old. It's <laughs> over, yeah? But the policeman, the policeman can get, you know, it's very rigid and arthritic. It always breaks and shit. <laughs> yeah, but I don't listen to either too much. I hear them because I'm awake, and we all are. So what's happening, you're going to hear, yeah? But does, there's a huge difference between hearing and listening. Yeah, and it you know, usually doesn't cross over to listening. And even if it does, I see I'm not the listener. Yeah, because I I recognize what I'm not, not by what's being done, but by the claiming of it. Yeah, as soon as something shows up and says I'm here, I know I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> and to feel the space of that we are, you don't have to turn and look. You're never going to see it. You're not going to catch it like this. You're it. Yeah? So it's a mystery. If you try to look into it, doesn't work. Yeah? You can't do it fast enough. So you just, you get stopped here, and then there's a sense of a huge, empty, whatever, space. No, you knows. can't catch its own tail. Huh? Yeah. All this stuff. So you're in a you sense of something. And I think it becomes uh, sufficient, and it's enough. Yeah, and the underlying 
basis of this action figure turns into contentment and satisfaction instead of being, uh, you know, restless and irritable. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're just chilled out. And I don't like the word happy. I like content. It's more than content is a, a good feeling. And you have a very, uh, you have a really living definition of enough. Yeah. Enough. You know, something happens. Yeah, it's enough. I don't need to, you know, I hit, I enjoy a four foot wave based on my physical condition. I don't have to go into nine to 12 foot surf. I'm not, I'm going to be, can't do it. So four foot waves are enough. Brings back the same childish smile like every time I've ever gone in the water. Nothing has changed. No matter if it was big surf or small surf, I always come out the same way. Joyous. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Because it's not the water. The water t teases something that's already here. Yes, that's all. How, if you can see beauty, it's the beauty in you that's seeing it. Yeah. You're the, you're the dreaming of this place. So, yeah. I, I didn't get over all the points. Yes, Lud. Yeah. But I would. Well, if I understand you correctly. Yet you don't, a, probably. Give, <laughs> don't. give me a, you know, like a. Not a yes or a no, but an idea if I'm on a, a right track of understanding uh, your uh, talk. You just this last part of it. The, the voices in the head you're talking about um, um, have a tendency to make judgments, and they're up there, and you're judging good and evil. And you're so, not. They are. It is. Yeah, yeah. They're they're judging. Uh, yeah, you want to. Yeah, you want to separate yourself from. From the uh, the voices, that, uh, so you so you don't get sucked into the. Well, let me just jump in one second. Go ahead, man. You don't have to separate yourself. You're not connected to it. See, see, this is what we get. It has a historical belief that you're connected to it, and then we have to separate. That's not true. We're not connected to the voices. But I'm saying I'm aware of it. Yeah. Yes. I'm aware of it. Yeah. And I need now, not all the time. If I was aware of it 100, I'd be fucking heaven. If I was aware of it all the time, oh, no, you may be in Skillman, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> if I was aware of it all the time, you see, I'm. <clears throat> the, the, my, the problem comes in when I'm not aware, and I get sucked into the story. Well, that's a problem. big story huh? right there. Huh? See, I would look at that as a story. What you just said. You get stuck in being sucked into the story is yeah. another story. All right, so you're so you so you just just so, keep so taking you, it back. So so you just dissolve it right then. You just dissolve it by saying what you said. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I got go. it. Yeah. There I you got go. It. Exactly. I got it. We don't have. We are a story <clears throat> that says it has stories. So we think we have a lot of stories. That's the story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the stories is you, you're you connected to these voices, so mm -hmm. I need to get a way to separate. I don't believe you're connected to them. I don't. So, therefore, I don't have any desire to find a way to uh, disconnect. I don't, mean, I don't mean I don't believe I'm connected so, to them. So, you're not getting into the battle right there. So, you're no, not getting I'm, into the battle. This whole thing is yeah. disarming to me. Yep. Completely. Yep. Yep. Every time I get in that habit of trying to do something... It just usually something. To, I just put the gun down. Yes, and then yeah. it's now a habit. I don't yeah. have to put the gun down. It's just yeah, second nature. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. it gets riled up and then it just dissipates. Yeah. Just, I mean, the aperture is opening, the aperture is closing. Whatever, it's just happening. It's just it happening. Now. But the aperture aperture closes and opens as almost like a, a mirage. There's mm -hmm. no closing and opening. I'm You're just using it pop. as... Oops, I'm sorry. It's up, up, up the, yeah, but, sorry. but the claiming of it will produce a, a sense the of... The claiming of it, basically, it sort of puts a fence in awareness. You know, it's like, this is my awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, this is what I see, and this, I'm going to fight you to the end because I see it this way. But obviously, there's no borders in awareness. There's no thing. But as an imagery of, of how it feels, self-centeredness is a very myopic view. Mm -hmm. Yes? And a myopic view 
is also very jealous and shit like that. And it won't brook any idea that there's a, a panoramic view. So you're only going to have myopic. Now, the panoramic view s- includes the myopic view. It's can see the myopic view. But the myopic view cannot see the panoramic view. It can't. But the panoramic can see the myopic. Yeah. yeah. There's no wrong, there's no right or wrong in a myopic view. It's a my just it's a myopic view. Self-centeredness is a very myopic view. It's mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, if everything everything is seen as how it pertains to you, it's a myopic fucking view. Yeah, it's not it's like my view. We're not giving any judgment on it. We're just saying the fact. This is to, you can describe a view as myopic. It's tunneled. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, it has an agenda. Uh, there's a bias, a very strong bias. Now there's a panoramic view, which is the emphasis on the particulars gets washed out a little, and then there's a sense of the space. Yeah. So, so, so the myopic would be like if Debbie Downer. Well, the myopic yeah, would be that Debbie yeah. being down is so fucking important. That would be a myopic view. Mm-hmm. Instead of Debbie is down. You know, right? Saturday Night Live, that, that character. Debbie oh, Downer. I don't know Debbie Downer. All right, she's always saying, oh, I don't feel so good. And, uh, well, yeah. I, you know, I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I. Well, I, someone I, like that. If you find yourself in that condition and it's not yours, then you do service. Then you watch Bloodline. Then you distract it. Instead of trying to deal with it as it, you send it around the corner for a while. Yeah. I flip people out because they always give me this whole problem that I go watch Bloodline on Netflix. They're like, I wasn't expecting that answer. But, hey, it's a, it's just a, it's a matter of interest and attention. And if you... If there's a mental fire and you send the mental fire department, you're going to have a huge blaze. So you might as well send them around the corner, let the house burn down, and the land will be used for much better purposes. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want the problem to be your source of news about the solution. You just don't, you just don't want it. It's just obvious. Like Einstein said. What's causing the problem is you're not going to find the solution from it. Mm-hmm. It's just not. So mm-hmm. the problem resides in the mind. The AA gives some incredible, great diagnoses, and the problem resides in the mind. What we'd call most people's mind is thought system. Yes? Thoughts, feelings, you know, going over feelings, but thoughts about feelings, thoughts about what I saw, thoughts about past, thoughts about the future. So the problem... It's, it's, it's vehicle for infection is in the thoughts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how does it use the thoughts? It presents its thoughts from its system as your thoughts and therefore overrides the unsuspected resource of another system. Yeah. And completely neutering it because now you'll look for the underlying other system from the fucking failed system. Instead of looking at the failed system from here, we try to find here from the failed. Yeah? Yeah. So you're just trying to change. You just you just keep trying the same new glasses. Mm-hmm. But the one pair of glasses that you have taken to be your eyes, you never feel for them. You're trying to correct what you think are your eyes. They're not your fucking eyes. They're a point of view or a system called self-centeredness. They can be taken off. Yeah. self centeredness cannot take them off, but they can yeah. be taken off. And what I study, that's called impersonalization. So, in other words, so in other words, you're not uh, uh, you're not uh, identifying with the thought. You're you're, you're impersonalizing yes. the thought. Therefore, you neuter it that way too. We go a different way. Huh? We go a different way. We go just ahead. see that we're not that which is identifying with the thought. We do not let the identification as the thinker go and then try to think different things and shit. I don't think that works. So we just take it a step back, in my view, and we just we just see we're not that which is identified as the thinker. So we don't. I don't have much interest in changing thoughts. In other words, I don't try to make personal thoughts impersonal as that which made them personal. 
I just don't. I don't. I see it as a losing so equation. You, so can you explain that? So you have a doer. You have a. You have a. I'll explain it to you, just like that. So, so it sounds like a good plan, and it could be all right. You seem to have a lot of personal thoughts. So we're and without changing the one who thinks they have the personal thoughts, we're going to try to give you a way of looking at it as impersonal thoughts. Yes? Yeah. But you're not included in it. You are in the same condition as you oh, were. You're now you're going to... Tr- you're standing behind yes. the mind of the body. Yes. You yes. stand behind the mind yes. of the body. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're back here. Watching exactly. everything take place. Exactly. Exactly. Where there's no impersonal, personal, oh, or anything. Yeah, yeah. You just see it. Oh. Yeah. No, so why do I, forget I that feel thing? it's not a... F- it's not efficient. So here's the thing that's taking things personal. We're not looking at that. We're just going to take, let's take the things that we're taking personal, impersonal, without changing that which is taking things personally. I don't see that as fucking efficient. I think it just reinforces, now you're going to be a, you're going to be a personal, impersonal. <laughs> or I see it on stream, you're gonna try to be a non-self as a self. It just what does it do? The non-self as a self, really the first thing it triggers is a different closet. You know, less loose fitting clothes, mostly yogurt, let's say lemon, lemon baby, whatever. So I looked apart. So now I looked apart. Now I gotta do some shit that I think people who are there do. I'm gonna do the part. And therefore, I'll be the part. No, it doesn't work. So you explain new age. Basically, new age. A lot of new age pants are kind of empty. This is my humble opinion. I'm yeah, not yeah. saying I whatever. The beauty yeah. is mind is unstoppable. So if mind wants to go to where it already is by doing all this shit, it, it will. If it doesn't want to, it will. There's no... <laughs> What makes everything what it is and what it isn't is the mind before it all. So I have no idea. You could go, you can get enlightened by reading the, the fucking phone book. It could happen. Yeah. It, there's no, there's no constraints on that, which is before everything. So it can, as the Course in Miracles described, it can be in this event right now that it's, it's going to dream itself out of the dreaming. And as it's dreaming itself out of dreaming, you could construe this as one of the events of dreaming oneself out of dreaming. The dream is going to get happier. So it's going to, you're going to start traveling lighter. That's another way, supposedly, to get out of it. Yeah? There's yeah. no, there's no, nothing has a meaning other than that it was given a meaning. So it's the mind. So the mind can be in a certain condition that something it does reinforces something it ain't. The mind can be in the same condition that something it does that looks like it reinforces something it ain't is seen. So it takes out all the energy of that event. So selfing has no energy. It's playing to that which has energy. If you, you do not see selfing going on here where everyone, uh, but it seems to be playing to an audience this way. We're that audience. There are no bodies in the arena. There's awareness, and something is co- trying to convince something else to go along with this story, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, if you were that which wanted to drink, you would be drinking. Mm-hmm. But it sure sounds like something is trying to convince you to do something that you may not be convinced about doing. Mm-hmm. That doesn't sound like me. Mm-hmm. It I, doesn't. I think I heard it explained another way also. You have a projector. It's projecting a movie. You look at it, and, uh, you know, you go to a big screen movie, and right away you're getting sucked into that because they know how to make the, they know how to make these movies to suck you into it. But break it down to its elements. All it is is a piece of film. There's light going through it, and there's an image being. All right. So yeah. let me jump in here. Go ahead. Where we would put the message is, you're not that that thinks it's getting sucked into the movie. That's all. <clears throat> It seems like too much work. You're trying to rehab something that can't hold a rehab. It's just going to fucking go back to the mechanical habit. You're not going to convince it. It's like I had this event very, very clear. I was involved with the Course in Miracles. And at this point, I knew 
that the body had some role as the obstacle or whatever. Yes. And there was a lesson in the Course in Miracles says, I am not a body. I am free because I am just as God created me. So I would basically chant that a lot in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Because I felt the body was the obstruction. Now, that was corrected very quickly, and I realized the only thing that wants to chant it's not a body is a body identification. <laughs> so that whole, and that could have been tons of books I bought, tons of se seminars I would have gone to, just got fucking, just got made into pasture land quickly. It was just being... Ding, no. So I, because I was sitting there with great earnestness, I am not a body, I am free, and I'm realizing, fucking, that which is not a body doesn't have to chant, it's not a body. It's never take. it's, that is not what's taking itself to be the body. The head is, says you already are a body, and we're living this fucking dream of time based on a time event. Yeah. yeah? It's not saying you're going to become self, it says you already are one. Yeah, this is the point. It's saying it's making an assumption to be a fact, and it's not a fact. So, you are not a self. You are not a doer. You are not a thinker. But there is thinking. There is this all these ideas. But you are not the noun of it all. That's all. So this whole idea of oh, I want to become self-realized individual. So what you're saying, forget about it. You you're there. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying forget about it. I'm just, well, I mean, I'm just, forget about I'm just hopefully sharing some things I saw about that approach, and I feel they're they're galvanized uh, pattern that I don't think you're going to have an aberrant one that's going to change the effects. Yeah, I think the idea, every movement that's claimed as by being the doer of it that movement has a meaning given from that idea of being the doer that could bite you in the ass, yeah. even though it was a beautiful, pristine action, that action may not be used for that openness and whiteness. It may be used to reinforce that you're the super doer. Yeah. Bondage yourself has iron bracelets, golden bracelets, but you're bound to this old idea. I have to ask you a question. All right, but then we'll get in soon because we got to go back to uh, Dover. Huh? Yeah, well, it's very simple. Uh, oh, we're just going to stare in the and gaze. And it's something that I experienced <laughs> late, uh, lately. My perception, as far as what I see, seemed like it has widened and gotten bigger. In other words, what I, what, if I looked at a uh, yes, yeah, so I got it. Center, bigger, yeah. If I looked at a shopping center before, it would be on this scale. Now when I look at a shopping center, it blew up. It got bigger. What's going on? I think it's happening, actually. Huh? You saw a strip mall, and now there's a huge mall. Yeah. <laughs> it's like something changed. It's like I got a, a, a higher uh, uh, multiplying lens in my eyes. Great. They're not from in your eyes. They're, yeah, and you're conscious. behind them. Yeah. yeah, it's your conscious. Great. Then enjoy it. Yeah. But I what guess. is it? What causes it? Who gives a shit? I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. There are, there's no causes I in mean, dreams. It's, it's, it's a little Dreaming isn't caused. It's an activity. There's no cause. There's no source because it's not real. It's like if you didn't, if you had a morning to the, the awake dream, you would see it in the same light you do a night dream. But did yeah. you ever experience that same thing, is what I'm saying? Yes, many times. The aperture moves quite a lot. Yes? Never happened to me before. Well, well it's, if anything... Well, well go to satsang, it, it will oil that, and so it'll, <laughs> it'll, instead of being inflexible and stuck in self-centeredness, yeah, it will exactly. move. Yeah, exactly, but... Yeah, when I was depressed, it seemed like it was, oh, of everything is fucking smaller and condensed. Yes. Well, that that's the way it gets the reflection of how big it is. When you see meaningless and smallness, you're a huge fucking thing. Oh. Yes. Oh. That's why you got to do something, 
even though the last thing you want to do is do something. You got it's just like when someone to overdose on heroin. You get them up and walk. The last thing the person wants to do overdose on heroin is get up. But you get them up and walk. Yeah. Same thing with people who are depressed. They got to get out. They got to do something. Get out of the head. Well, get outside, and that will be sort of getting out of the head because they're they're in a bad neighborhood up there. Oh, so you got to do it. There. These things are simple, verifiable, working, skillful means of wonderful on certain periods of the action figure. You need it. The action figure goes into fucking rabbit holes. And so you need a defined proctologist on your fucking <laughs> phone numbers so you can get your, get your head pulled out of your ass until you realize there's no ass and no head. You do. Skillful means are awesome, but the greatest part about skillful means is when you don't need them. Yeah, I love it. I, when you become the skillful mean, that is fun. Don't you hate relying on other people, seriously? Like we, to get home from Sicily, we had to rely on Swiss air. You would think everyone says Switzerland, they make those great, they're all functioning. Actually, Swiss people tend to have a tight sphincter, really. They're very good. <laughs> Swiss Air, unbelievable and safe. They lied to us, everything. Yeah, and the frustration was you were depending on something that was undependent, not dependable. Yeah, and you have no, and they know you have no other recourse, so they can treat you shittily. And what are you going to do? Yes, really. So basically, you just take it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's something about that that disturbs me in a lot of ways, and I came out of. Re addiction with that prostitution thing where I was constantly relying on others to do what I wanted them to do. And it was that success rate was going down at the end so badly. I was really fucking pissed and frustrated. And I came out of that event with a strong feeling. I don't want to be dependent on people that, that much. It just don't. And so and uh, most most importantly, the sense of contentment and satisfaction. I do not want that to be based on other people's condition. Like a lot of people I have worked with in AA, I meet them, and then I realize when they call me, I need to talk to their kids because their condition is based on their kids' condition. So it's pointless to talk to Mitch because his condition is based on his kids' condition. So let me talk to the kids because Mitch is pointless, you know? I can tell Port Mitch, and he knows, uh, but the kids aren't getting it, and his condition as a father is based on their condition. Yes? So this thing, uh, to me, being what you're looking for is an incredible place to put, you know, put your fucking chaotic head to rest. Yeah? Because it gets me frustrated as an action figure. Because what can you do? I can't walk, you know, home from Sicily. Yeah, I can't, not yet. Right. I can't, you know, and then you want to go to another airline and they own the other airline. <laughs> so there's no other airline. They're all the fucking same airline, you know. <laughs> it's just, so there you go. Yeah. And they know, yeah, what is it called? Yeah, you're, you may voice discontent, but you're not going to do shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Can yeah, I just one second. Yeah. The reliability on your innate nature is the only, I feel, thing in this world of change and everything else that's reliable, truly. I rely on that which I can't see. I don't know. I don't have a resume from it. But I have an intimacy with being directed by some power. And that power is what I rely on every day, all day. And then I rely on a lot of things, and a lot of times it's a crapshoot. Some things work, some things don't work. That's why I like Toyotas. They're reliable. <laughs> yeah, they do. So, But if you're looking for reliable reliability in a place that's coming and going and it's volatile, how can you blame the place? It's just like the, the story of the lady with the snake. They, the lady sees a snake and saves it and gives it little eye droppers and gets a little comforter for it and then being nice to it for a couple of days and then she's walking around with a snake and the snake bites her. 
And so she's surprised because she's been so nice to it. And he looks at him and goes, hey, I'm a snake. <laughs> That's the way it goes. So where to find solace from the storm? Right where you're sitting. Yeah. The last place you'd probably look. Yeah. So. Yep. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So one, thanks. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, two, so our true nature, right? So yeah. we talked about the idea of like, I don't have to digest my food. It don't have to be my heart. Are we that nature? You know what I'm saying? Is like. The one before all nature? that? Yes. Right. So you are the closest you can get to 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 really describing you is to describe what you're not. Really, that's why I love negation. Negation brings you back to what you are. Affirmation takes you in a way away from what you are. I feel so. Negation is what works for me. So I because I have plentiful shit of what I'm not all day. So I can have that reminder of what I am by seeing what I'm not all day, all the time. It's great, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe we're a, a temporary condition. I don't believe there was a beginning or an end. I don't believe a lot of things, but I don't care that much about beliefs. Yeah. It's part of the idea that we're being lived. I would say you're being lived, yes. Or you're the living of it, yeah. Yeah. The ing really works. There's a, what I'm interested in is there's an event going on that seems to be no volition, no on and off, doesn't seem to have a beginning or an end. Exactly. It's a basis. It's like the water f that the fish is living in. And mm -hmm. the fish is probably very, some you know, to protect itself from predators, it's very clear about barracudas and everything else, but it's not clear about its whole environment, which is water. Yeah, and, and the head, our heads, if you walk into a classroom, there's a huge chalkboard, your attention is going to go to that dot of chalk on it. Yeah, You'll see the particular, the little dot of chalk, at the expense of the giant black chalkboard. So this is self-centered view, yes? Goes to particulars, leaves, loses the sense of the space of it all. Just it's That's how it works, yeah? Right. Yeah. So... The guess the best way to arrive at a sense of what doesn't fail is to tell the truth what of, of what fails. Yeah. And then seeing what fails, you're going to discover what doesn't fail, which is the seeing of what fails. That's how that's how it went with me. I'm just sharing you. It's uh hurt one second, Lord. I'm just sharing you. It didn't go anywhere, but I'm just Expressing some of the curly cues where I went, but this is exactly how, you know, if I can describe it, how it's seen. No, that's how it. That's how it goes. There was a convincing, which puts it. Then the emphasis goes off what's seen into the seeing of it, and then the emphasis hasn't moved that much from there, and then there's more seeing of shit. And uh, I always wanted to get out of here since I was young. I mean, I'd do anything. And now, I'm just, my escape, my, the wisdom of, of no escape is there's no escape from an imaginary event. So I'm here completely. Really. I mean, I was keen on getting out of here fucking all the time for a long time. And now, that has been flattened and completely gone. And, uh, yeah. Because I... I, you can't escape from what you're not in. And I humbly believe we're in what we may be looking for. Yeah. And what we think we're out of or want to get out of, we can't be in. Yeah. So it's both, it's both extreme dualities. We're trying to get out of what we can't be in and we're trying to get into what we can't be out of. That's humbly how I would explain this vision of self-centeredness. It's, it's, it's like you're thinking you're looking through the windshield and you're looking through the rear mirror. Yeah. And basically the mirror isn't to catch that, it's to reflect you. You see what's happening with technology. Yeah? It's like Narcissus Pond Mobile. 
You know the story of Narcissus, he, loses, he gets so absorbed in his reflection, blah, 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 yeah? What's happening now with, with technology? Yeah, Everyone's see, on fucking screen. Hypnotism. Hypnotism. Past hypnotism. Yep. Way past hypnotism. Deep hypnotism. Yes. Way past hypnotism. It's an ideation. It's like they call Buddhism cherishing of self. There's a cherishing of it. Yeah. We're absorbed in it to the point the head is. Yeah. That it's going to mutate. It's just finding new ways to mutate more. So now it has technology where it can look at itself all fucking day. Right. You know, and then people that, you know, I don't, can, can you believe it when, if you were a teenager, if you had TikTok, mm. you would have killed yourself probably. Mm. These kids, I can't believe it. Just like that lady at the, young girl at the meeting we were at, she's saying she's ugly, she's this and that. Where did that come from? From fucking social platforms. Yeah. This is incredible. Mm. Yeah, it's as, uh, yeah. So Narcissus has a mobile pond. It's great. And of course, there was no Narcissus. It's an archetype. And that archetype is having a fucking field day here. It is. It is, truly. I mean, 24 7 screen is mind boggling. Mind fucking boggling. Yes. All right, but yes. Yeah. Now, if I can remember this, uh, Teresa has a little plot, a little saying. I don't know who... Downstairs, honey. Yeah. Huh? I don't know who it's by. I'm going to try to repeat it because I can't find it. I went downstairs to look for it and I can't find the damn thing. But it has <laughs> to do with life gets lived to its pinnacle when we're awake, sleeping, is it awake, sleeping, or we're sleeping, awake? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's something like that. But the gist of it is, it's like, <coughs> I suppose, it's like you're saying, you're not there. You're, you're not in that experience. Oh, I don't know. You'd have to get the exact quote. Yeah. I don't know. That doesn't. But I, it's when like I hear sleeping, when you're awake sleeping or something, I don't like when I hear pinnacles and stuff. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, I, added no, I, little, I added that little. I added that little. Pinnacle stuff. sounds like you're going to judge yourself and you're not at the pinnacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I made a mistake. Fuck? I made a mistake. I added that. It doesn't say pinnacle. Yeah. I'm trying to explain the thing and. Uh, well, know, find but, it and then don't. Then yeah, I, it's, it. yeah, it's it's okay. It's in the office somewhere. I'm not going anywhere till Monday. <laughs> And you can get to me and follow. Yeah. But pinnacles. But it, is, it explains the same thing that you're saying, and it's, you know, yeah, in a, in a couple lines. It, I bet you it doesn't. No. 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 Okay. It may explain to what you think I'm saying, <laughs> but let me see if that, it explains what I think. All I'm right. Saying. Yeah. Because a lot of times when people tell me uh, what I think I'm saying, it's not not what I was saying. Yeah, because well, truth they, changes too. Truth never stays old. But what I'm just saying, this is what happens. I mean, people, so you can pin truth down. But let me just, we're not talking about truth now. We're talking about how people see something. Yeah? When someone says they know how I see something, I, they don't know how I see something. They may not. So well, when I'm they sorry, say, this I'm sounds sorry. exactly like me, I may yeah. not agree. Uh, I'm all. sorry. No, no, I just say uh, I don't, may not agree because. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 you know, sorry. that's why I don't go on any dual yeah. talks and stuff or yeah. uh, panels or anything. I don't, uh, I have, I'm just not into it. Yeah, this is an well, invitation. Well, this well, is it's not. Like having, it's like when I go, I studied art and, and they judge your art. You know, who the fuck are they to judge my art? Well, yes, whatever. But to me, it's for me as where my seat assignment. It's very important for me to be sheltered. So this is an in, this is a a muffin from an independent bakery. I don't <laughs> listen to other stuff. I don't. Yes, and oh, this sounds just like you. I this doesn't sound like me when it comes to it. it doesn't. Yeah. So I just like to keep it clean. Yeah, you want to you want to be careful. You don't get. I this just I could hear somebody and I can maybe grasp what they're saying, but it's not coming from the it's not coming from the independent bakery. 
Uh, what I attempted to share today is exactly at phases in this dream time, how things change. And I saw it. It's exactly. I did not read this. I'm telling you how the cards fell. And I'm just sharing what it looked like underneath the card. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't get it from a book. I didn't get it from some past traveler. I'm just sharing uh, the events as they have cascaded through. And some of them were pivot points. Yeah, I was, there was this point and then a, like an avalanche, it opened up a new vista and then another avalanche, another vista. Yeah. And that av avalanche was intimate and the vistas were intimate. Yet they're all seeing for everyone. That's the beauty of it. So, yeah. What What is it that's... Um, but we're going to end soon. Okay. So I'm going to ask. So what is it that's doing? Hmm? What is it that's doing? So I don't like know. I think it's just, it's just, uh, there's just an engine of action and that engine is going to putter out and, and that's stop. My, my, my mechanical. Well, yeah, you're, you're not an infinite thing, right? No. And I like the idea of an action figure. Because of growing up with toys, remember that you'd get Batman and yeah, came yeah. with that, that other action figures. So everyone would probably want to be the Batman. So I like to talk about Batman as just an action figure. Right. So that's what it is. So this is an action figure. We're engaged. Shit happens and stuff like that. But it only has a certain amount of a momentum, 70 years, 80 years. 55 years. Yes? And of course, it's going to come to an end. Yeah? Like Uncle Fred. And it's going to be like it never happened, probably. Because there won't be anyone to have a memory of it. Without you here, how are you going to remember you? <laughs> You're not. That's right. When I passed away, when I overdosed, and one of them I was out long time, because it took a while for the paramedics and the ambulance to get there, I was in a North Beach apartment. My friend had to realize I had gone out and he had to call someone. And that takes time. So by the time they brought me back, I must have been out for a half hour or so. And I'll tell you, uh, when I was out, there was no in. <laughs> I had a sense of emptiness and there was no Paul in there and no one in there. And then I popped out into the movie with Paul. But there was a distinct sense of complete absence of any, no idea there was a world or nothing. Yet there was some kind of existence. Yeah. So I don't feel this is a, a real event. I don't. I may die kicking and screaming, and I still don't believe it's a real event. That may be the action figure show, mm -hmm. but I don't. Too many times I've not been here, and it's and I was nowhere else. <laughs> that looked like this. <laughs> so I don't know. So yeah. I'm or something. I think this is dreaming. I do. I think the best description of dreaming is Course in Miracles. Though I haven't run into tons of shit. Tibetans have good ideas, but I haven't I've only read maybe eight or nine big books, you know, of stuff. But I think the Course in Miracles description of dreaming feels completely spot on to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that there's a dreaming of a something else that you've made to be yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. being firm in faith in that—that's the act of denial of what we are. Yeah. So the obsessive mission, the obsession of the movie character, produces a, a seemingly forgetting of the screen. Really. Mm -hmm. You get so obsessed with the movie, right. you forget the screen that allows it all to occur. Now, do you forget the screen? No. This is the beautiful out of everything. It's seemingly so. Yes? It's seeming so. It appears to be so. It's sort of like a mirage. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So there you are. You, it looks like you're walking in the desert. It looks like there's a place mm -hmm. with some trees and a little mm -hmm. building or a bathroom, and you're hoping. So mm -hmm. then you walk there, and you find out there isn't. Mm -hmm. There's no bathroom. There's nothing. Then you walk back out and you look and you see there's a mirage. There's a bath. You know there is no bathroom, yet you still see the bathroom and the trees. Yeah, this is what this place is like. Yeah, it's like a mirage. Yeah.
you think you're out of it, it still keeps appearing because you're never in it, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, that's difficult, but you're never in it, really. Yeah. It seems like it. Yeah, but that passes away every night when you go to sleep, doesn't it? Do you seem like you're in it when you're sleeping? I don't think so. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to end soon. Because we got, I want to make sure we get... I mix. Safe I want to make that. sure we eat today. I, I missed dinner last night. <laughs> we we got There's a lot of good places to eat around here. We did a we did a what happened? The Zoom went longer than I thought it was going. But hey, hey, there any other questions? More, you might as well get me now. There's only one more opportunity got, today. Tonight, I got. I got. You said that you had that. Experience. You're never going to ask me another question, bro. Huh? You okay. spent all your. Yeah, I gave you a one. certain allotment of questions. Right, my last one. cut off. <laughs> this is my last one. Just remember that. All right, yeah. I promise. All right. So you you said you had this death experience. Well, I drank around a quart of booze when I was younger, so maybe 17 years old. And they put me in the basement. I went to the scar club. They said, all right, he's drunk. And then I, I was laying flat, and I saw my body, or what looked like a, a kind of a cloudish body rise up it rose up and then it came back down so i'm assuming that when it was rising up i was i was dying and then something happened and it must i don't know my conscious or something must have said that no you you have to stay here yet you have more life to live and that and that Thing came back down into my solid body, like. I don't know. People have been on the happens operating table. Happens a lot of time. Huh? It huh? Happens a lot of time. Yeah, people on an operating table have that same similar. Happens so, a lot. Is that, yes. is that what you're talking about? Exactly. No, what you're I'm not talking about that. That's a no, That's more like, uh, uh, like I overdosed once on coke, and then. Uh, the consciousness lifted and was above the body oh. and watching the body and then watching yeah. the people that I was partying with come over and start talking, what are we going to do with the body? And I found out who my real friends were. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there. <laughs> and I was up, up there. And then I kept And they were like fucking gathered around me. Like, what are we going to do with this? And then uh, I something happened. I descended and woke yeah. up. Yeah, 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 you saw that as my when you're up there. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you're up and looking and realizing you're observing, you, you saw that as my body. I saw it as me. Yes, I, mean, like, I did. Because the, I did. The, the thing that keeps you here probably is identification. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and this is all right. You want to. Are we rushing anywhere? I'm going to tell one more. <laughs> one sometimes. more story. <laughs> Not a story, though. I don't like to do this, but you guys are all seasoned veterans, so nothing's going to happen. So I was in Bali. It didn't matter that I was in Bali, but I was in Bali, and we had rented a van. I was with my girlfriend, Cindy, and her eight-year-old son, and we went to the North Shore, and I was looking for waterfalls. So we stopped in this village, and we said, are there any more waterfalls around? Because we all like waterfalls. So, And I said, yeah, there's a trail go up to the waterfall. So we took the waterfall, went up the trail. It was very cool. It was a very thin waterfall, but nice pools, and you could swim there. There was no one there. And so I went under the, the waterfall to take, like, a shower, and I felt like a something. And it was almost like an invitation, and there was a consent. I was like, yeah. And then suddenly something happened, and uh, all the weight of uh, – individuality was lifted and it was cool because I had witnesses this girl this woman and uh, her son and this thing happened for a while right I don't know what it was but it lifted and my face became like a kid's you know all the tension that holds you structure and Paul and everything sort of lifted yeah now and then I was in some point I was just blissed out and I was sitting there and I heard a voice. I didn't recognize it. It seemed to be behind this rocks over there. And I'm just, everything's cool. Like, so cool. <laughs> so cool. 
uh, by the absence or something. And then I hear it, it's talking, and it seems to be getting louder. Yeah? So it's talking to me, talking to me, getting a lot closer. And as soon as it gets to a certain point, it starts talking as me. It was a trip. I saw it re, I saw it re-engaging. It was a trip. <laughs> it was totally foreign and, and not me. And then talk to me. And then it switched to as me. And then sl- slipped right in. And then it was an afterthought. The thing was now a new chapter started. Now, the remnants of it stayed walking through the, you know, the jungle with the beads of water on the leaves, you know, fucking unbelievable visuals. And I was really still on cloud nine, but it had re-engaged, like almost someone reinserted the chip. <laughs> and the programming started again. <laughs> Seriously, it was like that. And then it just went on. She's never forgotten, but I didn't remember it. I mean, I got a vague sense of just not beginning of end bliss, just some bliss, emptiness, whatever. But, uh, you know, it just went. And after we took the hike out, it was getting less, you know, the, the beads of the water were being more ordinary and whatever. And I fuck that. <laughs> and on to the next agenda. But, uh, but it was a wild. I never forgot that that the re-engagement of it. I remember it clearly right this second that I did not hear that voice as mine. There was no idea of mine or me. And then it talked and talked and then it shifted to and to abs. And then it was like almost something slipping in. Yeah, that was sort of familiar. It went in and then now the story got very confined and very myopic and very time forward looking. Yeah. Whatever. What are you going to do? You didn't do anything to bring it about. You didn't do anything to lose it. You know, this, this whole idea of volition is, is really the sticking point. The head will always stamp that it's you. Yeah. And every time you share, no matter how many times you share about selfing as mechanical, the person feels like they're doing it or it's doing something to them. You just, you have to keep repeating it because these sub, some of these programmed aspects are stubborn. And that's why I like, you know, you see what repetition does to what you're not. I like to use repetition to seemingly affect it. So that's why we like, having, we give so many talks and satsang and I'm willing to go where. Because I, to- I truly believe a lot of people are not going to get that tsunami thing. It's going to be a drip, drip, drip thing. Yeah. And then it's going to break. And then there'll be a. And then the satsang will not be attempting to bring you to that invitation. It will just reinforce the fact on, on having never left. Yeah. Yeah. So.